Hello there. Don't have a good day. Have a great day. Talk to me, Goose. Restless. You steal the Declaration of Independence. Why so serious? The world. I could do this all day. Are you watching closely? Welcome everybody to the One-Eyed Film Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Mossberg, and I have an important announcement to make before this episode gets started. Uh, this will sadly be the last episode of the One-Eyed Film Podcast, season one. Don't worry, the podcast isn't ending, just this first season, if you want to call it that. The guys and I are going to be taking a break from the podcast for the summer to focus on our jobs. That'll be crazy busy from now until August. We figured it'd be the just best to put things on hold until the fall and then pick up in early September. I really wish we could have done episodes throughout the summer, but sometimes you just got to take a break and we will be back. I, we have so many things to talk about. We have a whole list. You won't even believe and they just have to wait. So enjoy this last episode of season one as the Nolan Bros cover Inception and we will see you in September. Welcome everybody to the One Eyed Film Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Mossberg, and today we are talking about Inception with who else than the Nolan Bros. Welcome back, Josh and Will, to the podcast to talk about our favorite director of all time. How are you guys doing today? Good morning. Bars. It's, William? It okay. is always morning, my dudes. I'm ex- sure. I'm ready for just a hi like really loud. <laughs> you remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> remember that one vine? Yeah. Oh, man. Intros are always whack with you two. I love it. We are talking about Inception. Like I said, one of, I would say, the easier Nolan movies to to watch. Some people may disagree with me on that, but for me, it was one of the easier ones to figure out, at least as I was watching yeah. it. Like, I understood it the first time I watched it, but it's still a great movie to watch. Break your mind a little bit and maybe a little bit easier for your grandma to understand rather than uh, Tenet that was complicated even for a physicist like my roommate, like we talked about. Yeah, definitely understandable on the first watch, but you can still get a lot more appreciation for some of the stuff a few times later in how many times you watch it. Uh, Unlike Tenet, you almost need to watch it two or three times to understand what's happening. Well, I would say that this is something you're going to probably have to watch again, especially if you this is your first time. I think think that's kind of a requirement for Nolan. Nolan is (laughs) Mr. Rewatchable, but it's definitely to an extent much easier to if you were to watch it for the first time like compared to Tenet like I didn't quite get all of that but you know I got like the gist I got most of it okay that makes some sense and if you go back again it make oh oh, oh it make even more sense Will, can you expound on that? Because I believe you watched it for the first time right before recording this. Josh and I had seen it before a couple times. What, do you, what did you think? Yes, I that this was my first time watching it. Although I have had a pretty good idea of what exactly yeah, the, the, the concept and a little bit of the plot behind it was. So I think I've never watched it before, obviously. But like I had like a general idea of okay, there's something about dreams. They're like going several levels, and they're trying to plant an idea in some guy's head, and like some weird stuff goes on, and something about his dead wife and the subconsciousness. So I had like a general conception for what the film was about, which definitely did help a little bit going in because I was like, oh, okay, I, I understand a little bit where this is going. But it definitely was a lot more awesome while watching it the first time through. And it definitely made me go, oh, this is what people are talking about. Yeah. Inception has kind of become a pop culture reference. When people will say Inception, you immediately think of multiple layers of a dream sequence or something like that. So it has kind of become that that level of reference where if you hear that reference, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've even seen the movie. You just start to understand what it means. And when you understand it has to do with dreams and all that, then you kind of have other realizations and figure it out along the way. Yeah, watching it through a second time, knowing the end does make more sense. It's kind of the point of a Nolan movie. We've established that because you understand the end of it and the the reveal, but starting from that point at the beginning, it just changes the way you watch it. And I wish that I could watch it again for the first time, not knowing anything to have that, trying to piece that part of the puzzle together for the first time. And that's why I'm excited for Oppenheimer to come out to, to kind of understand and work through his thought process as he presents his new story to us. And that's, that's how I felt with Tenet. That's how I felt with Memento. And I remember feeling that, but now it's just, I'm not going to say it's ruined because it's still very enjoyable to watch. 
And this is one of the more emotional movies. He uses this time difference and time dilation and not only shows what this concept would look like if we could enter other people's dreams, but even to write a beautiful story for it. Like, I don't think Tenet really had that going for it. It it didn't really have a story that always made sense, but it definitely showed the concept really well. Whereas this one is a really good story. And that's probably why it's such a pop culture icon. And I think The Prestige also had a decent story as well. It was very interwoven. So yeah, as much as Nolan likes to take his movies and put a new spin on it that no other movie or story has ever seen before, this one he really nailed down the story. Oh yeah. I also think that that is probably why it's his most popular film easily. But also just because it's just much easier to understand like like you said you want to go back and watch it for the first time because the first time you watch it I'd love to go back in time and watch this in theaters which I didn't get the chance to do that and this is one of those movies that you can watch once and not have to watch again unlike his other movies where it makes a lot more sense two or three times in but this I understood the first time I mm, I guess I shouldn't say fully understood but I was able to get most of my enjoyment in that first time and appreciate the depth and the concept and overall the story the first time I watched it. And that's not usually a Nolan move. Mm -hmm. And I think the concept of dreaming in a dream and using others' dreams and all of that isn't plausible, of course, that's the whole point, but it's sensible, I would say, where you understand the traveling lower and lower and time becomes longer and longer because it's something that we all experience. It feels like it's a lot longer in a dream than it actually is. So con- so building off of something that every single person has experienced in their sleep when they're dreaming really was genius on his part to, to use that. And if you're dreaming within a dream, the, the time dilation is going to be even longer. And especially using the kick music of the you know the the one music that's very opera like and slowing that down so far and so much so that it's almost just a rumble when we're down in the arctic area it just visualizes it in an audio form i guess so it it just shows the extrapolation of time and how it feels much longer especially when Cobb was talking to ariadne about how you don't even remember how you got into the dream you're just there and you start your story from there that is something you experience like you never remember starting a dream like you start a book or you start a movie and so that's something we can relate with and and that is shown where they they go to sleep and then suddenly they're just in the middle of it i think it was really playing to what the audience is already familiar with through dreams and sleep Mm -hmm. it also gives it just much more i don't know a very strong structure in the plot as well because tenet in prestige the plot starts to have a few holes in it where because of the concept there's some things that just can't happen like in Tenet where some bullets would have to be there before bullets were even invented if they were going backwards in time that's one of the holes that could happen there with that kind of idea of time moving backwards whereas here in Inception since it's not necessarily I don't want to say an unresearched topic but it's a topic that just varies from person to person but we all have very similar experiences with it and that it's just something purely in the mind and since the mind is malleable he can bend a story to whatever he sees fit and it still hold up in real life sort of thing Mm -hmm. which makes it just much stronger plot if that makes any sense at all. Well, it's also a pretty laid out story structure as well, which is part of the the intrigue of any Nolan film is the mystery. And there's definitely that within Inception. But to an extent, when you compare it to, say, Prestige or Tenant, it's those films are kind of all about the unraveling of the mystery because we don't know exactly what's going on. Whereas in the Inception, it's kind of laid out pretty straightforwardly, like, Okay, this works. Mm-hmm. You know, we share dreams. If you die, you wake up. There can be multiple Ooh. levels, and kind of the at least pretty much halfway through the film, we say, okay, we're we're the whole thing is we're trying to get this idea in this guy's head, and that's the entire plot of like a good portion of the film. And so throughout the entire thing, you always know, okay, this is what they're trying to do. I know their goals. That's not going to ever change. I know what they're trying to do. I know kind of the whole set, and that makes it a lot more driven and kind of compelling because you understand and now there are some ups and turns and changes and obviously they have to deal with some stuff going within but you kind of have a pretty good 
knowledge set of just this is the story this is the this is the pathway of the story whereas with other Nolan films it's we're following this guy and, and something's happening inception is a very linear film compared to prestige and memento and tenet where it just goes from start to finish even when it's going between the different levels of a dream it's still following like it's still at that point of the dream like in that point of the van level where they're they're all in the van it's all in that same point and what's crazy it obviously isn't real time sometimes we talk about if the timer that's shown is actually a real timer but from the van going off the bridge from yusuf driving the van backwards over the bridge and hitting the rail to the van hitting the water is an entire half hour from those two from point a to point b it just takes so long to tell the rest of the story down to the hotel level down to the arctic level and down to the limbo level there's just so many different parts of the story that happen between the van creening off the bridge to the van hitting the water and technically Cobb spends like a couple years down in limbo finding Sato. That even loops back to the beginning of the movie where we're shown this almost out of place picture or out of place scene. And then it was like, hey, remember that? That was just a teaser for what's coming at the end of the movie. You're not supposed to know what that is. So that that opening scene was technically at the end, like it shows. And I want to talk about the extreme poses. I brought this up in Tenet where a good filmmaker will use extreme poses. If he's going to make a callback, he'll make extreme poses with his actors or something memorable so that when he calls back to it later in the film, you remember, aha, that's what that was. If it doesn't relate visually, the audience is not going to understand what the callback is to. It visually needs to represent something. So in Tenet, it was like the flip or the weird wiggle on the ground to try and get the gun. And then you invert that in time and then it is recognizable backwards as well. With Inception, he uses very clear shots and very distinct, unique visuals in his cinematography. Like the waves crashing on the beach, the the guard who flips up the gun, and Cobb being dragged into that room. Like all of that is things that we're remembering from two hours ago that we were like, oh, I saw that, I remember. And then it's like putting the pieces together and where you were confused at that first point, now you're actually comprehending what it's all about. Or even down to Cobb and Mal's like, grasp that they have when they're when they're laying on the tracks that grasp calls back to when Cobb is like you forget Maul that we were we grew old together that original flashback that we had of them being that age that young age of 30s ish was not how they actually died in that dream in in limbo they were really old and that is where the story comes in and that's why it's so cute is that they lived 80 plus years together in limbo being the masters of their own world and that grasp was a, I call it an extreme pose, but it's an important gesture that change, it's not the same, but it's that that double-handed grasp between the two characters from the, the smooth young hands that we were initially shown, but then almost revamping history. And he's like, you no, know, this is actually how it happened. We were old and then the hands are all wrinkly because they're old and they'd grown old together and lived life together. It's like, just so well done. It, it doesn't need to be the same scene to be like, oh, that's a callback. No, it can still be an extreme pose told differently the same way Tenet does it, but does it backwards. This one was told differently, but it changed a key aspect of it that made it mean so much more. Yeah, I, I definitely remember watching that and being like, oh, but it's I almost don't like Maul throughout the whole film Mm -hmm. because you don't understand how long they spent in limbo together Mm -hmm. and then he gets to telling that they grew all together and does that callback to the scene on the train tracks and you're like whoa no wonder he's having such a mind battle with this because they lived a whole life together and that just callback remembering the beginning of the film was so well done like you were saying and i loved it because my jaw drops every time it's like that's so awesome my heart hurts almost because of it and oh, i love it yeah yeah mal was kind of psychotic in the film <laughs> like i got serious like every time she showed up i got like creeper vibes although to be fair she doesn't actually exist she's just a weird manifestation of a uh, cobb's subconscious but still it's like yeah, my the self-projection of my dead boy is pleasurably haunting my dreams. Well, it's, it's his guilt. It's his guilt that's haunting him and his guilt for keeping her in the dark. And that's what's so sad about their situation is not knowing what's real and what's not. And I want to talk about that in depth a little bit later. I want to blow your minds a little bit more really quick. I'm not sure if you've heard of this, 
This is one that Nolan has confirmed in an interview. I've, ta- I've talked about how he likes to make his stories a meta narrative and how Tenet was itself a temporal pincer movement, where if you watch it again, you it just so much more. It's more than just watching a movie again after knowing the twist. It's actually like putting another piece of the puzzle is watching it a second time. But with Inception, the way he he has a greater narrative over the bigger story is how each character represents a role in how a film is created and plays that part in the movie. So Cobb is known as the extractor. He's the director of the entire production. Arthur, the point man, is the producer. He makes sure things are in order, ready to go. He has the right people. Ariadne is the production designer because she's the architect. She designs, whether it's the buildings, in film, it's costumes and stuff. She's designing that. Eames is the forger. He's the actor. He's playing a role in order to put on a show. And Fisher is the mark. He's the audience. He's the one who's receiving the illusion or an idea being implanted in his mind the same way the audience is receiving an illusion of something that is fake, that is a movie, and being implanted with a concept that otherwise wouldn't have been able to be shown to them. I wish you could see, I mean, you can see your faces right now. It's, it's really crazy. He's to, he's, Nolan has come out to say this and say that is directly what is happening in Inception. And he even based the character of Cobb off of himself, longing for more time with his family because he's so invested in this love of his life of filmmaking. <laughs> I will say I'm not surprised because I've actually heard that before. So that's only shocking for Josh. I've heard that before. Maybe some of maybe some of us do our research. You know, no, no, it still is pretty good meta narrative. Josh, what are you thinking? You're thinking a lot right now. (laughs) This is why Nolan is my favorite director because (laughs) the movie doesn't stop once you leave the movie. Well said. Well said. It you. What? what? <laughs> that's sick. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to compare it to something because that's how my brain works. I'm trying to compare it to something, but there's nothing like that. Mm. I've never, I didn't even think about that. That's sweet. So like it's movie making in a movie, but you're not making movie. Obviously you're making dreams, but this dream is what the director's Want dream is. Think. That, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. I know, right? Oh it's my a whole God. nother level. What if it was all a dream? What I thought you were going to say is, like, Nolan confirmed this, that this whole movie is actually just a dream, and that's what the ending scene is all about. It doesn't topple over because it was never the real world. It was all just a dream. Did the top and fall over? No. Yes. Josh says no. Wow. I don't think Josh says no. Will, what do you, did the top fall over? Yes. Will says yes. Josh, I would I li- want to say yes. Josh, I would like to hear your reasoning. My reasoning? It's Nolan. <laughs> That that's my reasoning. It just just like you were just explaining, every character in the film is a role in creating a movie. And if they're all like in it, hang on, let me let me think about this because this is I don't have notes on this because you just blew my mind with that stuff. <laughs> I, I can't I can't refer back to something because this is all just fresh in my head. But just like you were saying, each character has a role as if they were part of of movie making right that's one level and i think just the idea that the whole movie in itself isn't even real is just even cooler rather than it just having a happy ending like if you think if you think of the levels we have inception we have this baseline this would be real life and then you have one dream two dream and then you have three dream which is what they got to right I believe they got to, I believe it was one, two, three, and then limbo. Yes, yes, one, two, three, and then limbo, correct? Now, wouldn't it be crazy if instead of this being the reality, this was also just another level, and we've really only gone through, like... Are you following what I'm trying to say? Maybe I I am. Hashtag Maul is right. if, If I were you and i believe that the top did not fall over i would argue that it was because the movie itself is a sort of dream for the audience how it can you can have the same dream twice you can kind of remember it you could argue that the movie itself is a dream and the audience can kind of remember it as the same way you remember a dream and that's why to Cobb it is real and that's where you could argue that the top did fall over is because for Cobb it was real and so that was like Cobb couldn't exist a level above that, but for us it wouldn't fall over because it is a movie, because it's fake for us. It doesn't actually exist. 
I think that's actually a cooler argument than mine. <laughs> See, it's just all about perspective, Mm -hmm. because to Cobb, living in real life, and if you were to somehow be in his shoes and looking through his eyes, if he turned around a few more seconds, the top would fall over. Whereas to us, the screen goes blank and we start getting credits. Then to us, we didn't see it fall over, so it didn't. There's no, it, it just ends. And see, that's a whole nother level in itself. Not, not in this movie, this isn't a whole dream, but to us, just giving it depth of different perspectives that's awesome and to Cobb, he doesn't care he doesn't care if it's real or not he's dealt with maul he's dealt with his guilt and now he can spend time with his children whether it's fake or not to him it's real now will why would you (laughs) say the top did fall over because i'm a simple man you see like you guys are talking about (laughs) abstract jargon and stuff like that and also you know what you'd be terrible be terrible if it even if he gets the same emotions or whatever and he's just spending time within himself trapped for all eternity He's probably like locked up in a coma or something like that if, if this is all just a dream, which is kind of sad. But anyways, I just I'm just a simple guy and I'm like, no, I'm not dealing with this complex stuff. It fell over. That's my head cannon. Confirmed. It's just easy. Also, if the top didn't fall over, wouldn't that mean that his kids would have to be just his subconscious filling in the gaps? So his kids wouldn't be real then. I don't think that would be a life I would want to live. Exactly. But he doesn't know that. He doesn't care. He's just living and will, until he actually dies from old age, whether, however time works in that dream, if we're calling that last layer a dream, he would, he would live long with his kids and all that. See, the strongest argument that I could say for why the top does fall over would be you see them at the airport. All of the other characters' character is way too complex for your subconscious to actually come up with that, I think. So if you just go based off of that, you see them at the airport why on earth would he not be able to go see his kids? You can dream by yourself, and you can go down a layer just you. He did that with Maul. That was the elevator where he would go to different levels of his his memories. It just helps to have others, especially if you're going to go down more layers. That is true. Now, I'm going to break it for you. I, I actually hadn't thought of my own hypothesis of how for their world is real, and for us it's sort of a dream, as movies are sort of a dream but i'm gonna break it all for you because nolan actually revealed this as well this is probably one of the movies he's been most open about and maybe because it's so easy to understand he revealed yeah, that i know his answer he revealed that any scene that had michael kane in it was real life and michael kane is in that ending scene where he's getting to hug his kids at last and that kind of means the top fell over and he's in the real world you know, Nolan has a real thing for Michael K. I'm just saying. Like, there's yeah. a lot of actors. I'm like, wait a minute. You're in another one. Yep. Cillian Murphy, Tom Hardy. They've been in a lot of other Nolan movies. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. What if Inception is real, but only in Nolan's dream? Because he... Because Michael, Michael Caine's in all... If, if, if it's real and Michael Caine's there, then all the other Nolan movies are real. It's a Nolanverse, guys. Actually, as much as that's <laughs> a terrible idea, a Nolanverse would break everyone's minds so much. Imagine these last a... imagine these last 20 years that he's been making movies they're actually all connected and then he comes out with a movie after Oppenheimer where everything every actor who's played a, multiple roles has actually been the same character somehow I don't know man just imagine like a MCU Nolan yeah. cinematic universe yeah. I don't yeah. like that because I really like individual standalone movies I know but yeah. it would be just super funny just to like imagine like the end game portal scene but like with mm-hmm. like just Nolan summoning <laughs> everyone yeah. from like his oh that's or secretly for the past 10 years this movie has been out Inception there's been a post credit scene that no one has ever seen <laughs> and it's literally just Nolan sitting there in a bed and it's just <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> Nolan wakes up from this that? dream <laughs> and he's imagining Inception this whole time that's crazy man whoa that I make a great that. movie yeah I had said that Tenet was kind of Nolan's take on James Bond as a spy who could you know still be suave and cool with ladies and all that I think that Inception is Nolan's take on the Matrix multiplied by a couple times compounded through a couple layers and using it as a weapon rather than as an adversary whereas the matrix was we're not living in the real world it's all fake and when you go into the the real world where there are you know it's computers and all that who are controlling you that's the that's the real world that you're like okay now i'm gonna go back into the matrix so that i can learn kung fu or whatever so i think that's kind of 
he had he had the idea of going to a state where you believe it's real and yet you know it's not that's actually very profound i think that that's a cool way to put it it is a very complex and just much more leveled version of the matrix the whole concept of a totem i think was really cool to see if you're in the real world or not obviously we just talked about the top but Cobb has done so much dreaming, whether it's his own or someone else's dream, that he's terrified of living in a dream where he has no control over. And that's why he's ready to kill himself in order to wake up. Anytime he spins the top, in case it keeps spinning. That's ultimately what drove Maul insane, is she thought the flawed world they live in was still a dream. And so she killed herself expecting to wake up in the real world. And that's the heartbreak of this one of, of the movie, is that she thinks that there's another layer above that she doesn't she wants to go back to a real kid. Like she's basically insane, even though the movie says she has been declared sane it's just so sad to to for her to think that there's more but yet it's not because we're doing the same thing living the life of a christian Cobb says at one point when he's holding a dying mall in his hands he says dreams really feel real while we're in them don't they it's only when we Mm -hmm. wake up and we realize that something is actually strange i imagine this is a similar thought that we will have when we get to heaven so many people in this world this limbo, let this become their reality. And that's all they're living for is this life where they don't even realize. They're like, everything here is just all there is and nothing more. But we as Christians know that there is more to life than just this world. That the real world that we're living for is to be with God for all eternity. Now, we're not going to pull a mall and throw ourselves off a building to get to that point. That'd be kind of lousy. But on that same note, we want to understand that this is not our final destination. We will have a greater place to be one day where that's real life, living with God forever and ever. I do like C.S. Lewis, how he often describes heaven as being more real than earth. I mean, even like the Chronicles of Narnia, for example, they talk about it like, you know, we're now, like the dream is over, as Lan quite literally says, the dream is over. You're in the real world, not the Shadowlands. Everything feels more, well, more real. And I think that's definitely going to be the case because it's going to be a realization that, whoa, this is what things are actually like. You know, we're just waiting for that final kick, so to speak. The ultimate kick. Everyone is going to get there. Or when, I should, I should be afraid that's, that's what I'm called. And we're just waiting for that final kick, so to speak, when all Christians are going to be there in heaven and enjoying the true fulfillment of what we go for. Dude. I didn't even have like a how to relate this to the Bible. I was just so excited <laughs> to talk about Inception, but I don't have. I have one word for you guys, bars. Bars. There it I, is. <laughs> I I just love the idea of relating this to like we just need that final kick and we'll be in what is reality. And the reality is we're destined for heaven. We're gonna wake up there, and I wish that would be with everyone that I know, but I know that that's not the reality. And I can spend this dream that I'm living in, even though it's worthless, it has use to get other people to wake up in the right place. Mm -hmm. Think about this quote again that I had already said, but I want to read it again with heaven in mind. And Cobb says, dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? It's only when we wake up that we realize something is actually strange. Like when we are finally perfected in heaven and we look back on our lives and we just are disgusted by the sin and the the concept of time at that point, And we are in awe of what lies before us for all eternity is. Oh, man. I stopped breathing after you said that. Hang on. That's... <laughs> Ah, that's just so meaty and I love it. I don't have another word for that. I'm gripping my tea so tight right now. It's a tea gripping moment. It is a tea gripping moment. And just just like another note that I kind of noticed in regards to kind of inception in the Bible and stuff like that is this isn't obviously a one to one parallel because like, no one did intend for this at all, but it's just neat when I just think about the character of Cobb and his whole team in general, but kind of how in a certain sense that mirrors a to an extent kind of what we do as christians where the idea is we're trying to plant an idea in someone's mind laying a seed that will eventually sprout into something big which Cobb says a lot you know you just you lay a very fundamental idea and it just it spreads and grows obviously we're not trying to do this for corporate espionage but <laughs> when you think about it like Cobb, you know he's literally descending into the deeper layers and there's aspects of the person he's trying to reach to who's fighting against him and he has to go through even to limbo to save someone and bring them back and like what more is that like christ like we literally say in the apostles creed he descended into hell he came to earth and then he went to death and then he went you know below even further and broke and defeated death and then came back like i just find that very interesting and similar 
And he did that all to plant an idea, to place a seed. And from that idea sprung the Christian church, Christian functions in our faith. And that grows and spreads. And other people, to an extent, are all trying to intercept other people. I liked what you were saying about planting a seed in somebody's mind as it pertains to Christianity and belief in Jesus. I don't exactly understand where you went with Jesus descending into hell and growing the church. But as we witness to people, it is not our job to save them. It is our job to continue to, it is our job to either plant the seed of faith or continue to grow it or to attempt to grow it. Maybe their heart is hardened towards God, but it is only our job to continue the work of whoever may have had a little sprinkling of explanation of what faith is. Somebody else in their past might have done that. We're just watering that seed and we might not get to see the harvest of it, but continuing to develop that thought, not as a trickery way that Inception does, but in a way where you don't hammer them over the head with the Bible and expect them to believe but simply get them to start thinking about why this world seems like such a dream and maybe there's something more. And there is, and I believe in that hope. I think we should make it very clear that us as Christians, we aren't trying to go three, <laughs> four levels deep into your head to try and plant the idea. We, we aren't doing that because it's not your faith at that point. Mm-hmm we also don't have an ability to go three, four levels deep into your head. It's Practically, not, yeah. It doesn't exist. It's um, a work in progress. <laughs> but we can't go to that We can't go to that first level, which is just reality, and tell you, hey, I have this idea, and let me tell you, it's pretty, it's pretty dope. It's bars, if you would say. If you would like to use that terminology, I agree, it's bars. Yes, yeah. Bible equals bars. <laughs> Bible Dude, bars. if we ever make merch, day. that's our first shirt. Bible Dude. equals bars. I'm just thinking like the political ramifications though of like this type Oof. of technology. Like seriously, like first off, he does mention that they use this for the military. So I'm presuming that it's existed for a little while because corporate people have defenses against this. Which just try to imagine if this actually existed in real life, like how crazy that would be. Because it doesn't seem to be the fact that most people are aware of this. But if like you just knew that there was a technology out there very expensive that you can just share a dream with someone. That'd be so weird. It's like such an interesting concept in like military applications, corporate app- espionage, obviously as we've seen, being able to take and steal something from someone's mind and put something into someone's mind. Like imagine like a totalitarian the government trying to do that. It's See, just, it's just some very interesting ideas I've been thinking about because- The thing is this kind of dreaming where it like very lucid does exist uh it's just not possible with other people and it's not <laughs> taken by any sort of machine it's taken by uh hallucinogens and it's also possible to do just by yourself but most people call that astral projection mm. where you can like exist in the real world but like only as like a spiritual body yeah i i've heard a lot of talk about that but i personally that that kind of scares me almost if as if it was in the real world because that seems almost like spiritual and almost demonic yeah i'm just i was just been thinking about like the political ramifications if such technology actually exists which would be probably do bad. mental wars <laughs> yeah i do feel as though lucid dreaming it can get very spiritual i'm not quite sure how i think the beauty of dreams is that they are so random and i've always thought of dreams as your mind taking something from the day that you just lived and sorting it out and sometimes it doesn't make sense but sometimes you can like take your dreams and be like oh yeah that's why i dreamed that is because i that happened last yesterday something like that but with they did explain in the movie that this was developed by the military arthur said that he said this was developed by the military so they could have actual combat sort of like the matrix like i already said where they could like stab each other and wrestle and all that without damaging their actual bodies where then they could just wake up if they were if they died and yes like you said there have been in their world the knowledgeable people the the very rich people who have information have developed ways to counteract that fisher had bodyguards inside his subconscious to try and protect from that so yeah that it would mean terrible things for espionage that would be really cool but scary and yet it would have to be a sort of heist as as this whole movie is to to try and do that and change people's minds and again you can't really say that you're changing their minds but you're still implanting a thought in the way that they implanted it with fisher to try and realize that his father really loved him and all that yeah also kind of weird to think about like this could almost be used in a practical sense throw someone into limbo instead of prison they oh. have 60 years worth of just nothingness in existence but only seconds pass and they have all of the effects that you get from prison but 
not the time spent. You know the problem of going to bed too late because you were up just playing video games? Not a problem. You go to bed and you're playing video games in your dream. You would have to create the video game from your mind, from your memory, rather than it already being written out in a program or in a, on a disc. My subconscious is already pre-programmed. <laughs> you would make least. you would make the greatest video game of all time, having played so many. You wouldn't even realize GTA, it. <laughs> GTA 6 is out, Elder Scrolls 7, 8, 9 even. Wait, wait, hold on. Like, we could think about it this. Like, if Joshua is, like, perfect architectural brain, we could just <laughs> hook ourselves up, go into his dream, and, like, play a first-person shooter in his dream together. Like, hey, yo, so, hey, yo, we offer tonight. You're talking yeah, about sweet. a local area network. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, yeah. A land party, right? Are we yeah. heading into Josh's head tonight? Yeah, man. I got this new level I thought about today. You should check it out. All right. They just... Dungeons and Dragons of the head. Yeah, I really like Inception. It's really cool. If you listener want to talk about it more, we have our Discord channel that you can join, talk about it there. We have video episodes on YouTube and we have short form content on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and then post updates on when our episodes go live on Instagram and Facebook. Follow us there. Share this with your friends. Let everyone know. Thank you guys so much for listening. We hope you have a great day. We love you all. God bless. Peace out, brethren. See you later, guys. Perfect. Bars. Bars.